studio for me. Man, I do a number of things. I think I would say I handle most of the administrative, logistical um, parts of Rage. That means the emailing, correspondence, um, outreach, uh, flyering, anything. Any, anything. That means you're the communications director. Um, I would say uh, well, I do a number of things. I'm not just mm -hmm. the communications part, but um, yeah, anything that needs to be done anywhere where I can kind of fill in. Um, I kind of step up and handle those. What makes you want to come to the hood and help <laughs> help the hood out? What's, what's up with that? <laughs> a lot of folks with your education, they like, I'm out of here. I ain't coming back to the hood to help nobody. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she didn't warn you, did she? Uh, uh, I, I, she kind of yeah, did, but, like, you know. It's real, ain't it? Go right, I mean, seriously. Um, well, I don't even know where to begin with that one. I would say... One of the things I appreciate about my education is that they did um, stress being a, a, in the community and giving back, um, especially in the black community. There's not a lot of black people on Berkeley's campus. So there was um, a strong sense of community and also a strong sense of duty and giving back to wherever you lived at the time, giving back to the neighborhood. You, you attended the University of California at Berkeley, mm -hmm. out there near Oakland in Northern California near San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a large uh, African American population in Oakland that is mm -hmm. dwindling. The San Francisco population is definitely dwindled. Mm -hmm. So what is life? I mean, you know California better than I do. I'm going to try to compare California, northern and southern, with here in Chicago. Uh, what's up with African Americans? Are, are we are we just disintegrating? But right before our very eyes, or it's just the natural progression? We came from the south. We moved to these northern cities. You know, like northern California, moved to southern California from Mississippi or Arkansas, and now it's a reverse migration. Mm -hmm. What's going on with us? Which I'm not saying it's bad. But what's going on? I, have they said where exactly we're going? Oh yes, because they heard, don't know I, where we're going. We I've know we're going number, somewhere. <laughs> I've heard a number of different theories. Yeah. I heard that we are going back yeah. to, to the south. south. Yeah. Um, some of us are just losing homes. If we were previously homeowners, we're just losing our homes and maybe moving in with other family members. And I would say the other other half, I, we just don't know where they are. If they were even counted in the beginning, so there's a number of factors that we would have to look at in order to determine where what's up with the black community. I don't think you can just say that we're just dwindling. I think we're still here, but it's just a matter of where where we are and what we're doing. Yeah, but that's what we where where are we and what are we doing? That is mm -hmm. the question. Mm -hmm. I, I can't answer that. <laughs> but you but you do have some idea because mm -hmm. you you you've been all over the country. Mm -hmm. You know uh, California better than I do. And how do you compare California northern and southern to the south side of Chicago? In what regard? Demographically, Demographically? educationally, um, everything. I would say the state of black America is the same all over the U.S. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, we were as we were saying when we were coming down here, we're just disproportionately at, you know, at a loss for everything. You know, you look at education, um, wealth, or health, or anything like that, bl blacks are disproportionately affected in a negative way by all those things. So I can't really say what exactly it is, but I think that um, I don't, it's affecting a lot of blacks in the US. Well, we have Oprah Winfrey here in Chicago. Well, I know she's she she really lives in Montecito <laughs> out there in Santa Barbara, she, but you know, she she'll be here for a few more days and she's going to be gone. But her studio will be here. But Oprah Winfrey, you have Barack Obama from Chicago, if mm -hmm. you will. So we see a lot of goods, a lot of great things about as the state of African Americans here in 2011. But the other side, mm -hmm. that's where you come in. How do we help the other side of those of us who just haven't quote unquote made it? Tough, ain't it? Yeah, it's, it's a, a tough it's question a because so you have education, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, did your parents really instill that you have to get that education so you can make something out of yourself? Yes and no. I think um, it wasn't not only what what I was getting at home, but what I was also getting from my peers. I made sure that I was around other people who wanted to go to school or who, who had their mindset that they were going to school. And maybe their parents were telling them that that was the only option, but I made sure that what I was getting at home was reinforced in my social networks as well. Um, I don't know, I can't really, I have a number of theories. I don't know where you want me to be. No, you go anywhere you want to go. I, I have, you know, you go, I don't care. Just, you know, I, ask, I just ask questions. It seems, I could be wrong. It seems like it's easier for young ladies such as yourself to be successful in a deindustrialized America. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Because you're going to get, you, you guys going to, you, I mean, I'm going to say it's harder for the brothers. Right. Because, right. you know, one of the time we didn't really have to do mm -hmm. well in school. We just get a job at the factory or whatever. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, even to be a mechanic, it takes a lot of education. Mm -hmm. So how does a young man, you made it, quote unquote made it, but how does a young man make it 
when he really doesn't value education. It's not really cool to get straight A's and go to the University of California, Berkeley. How do we make it? These young men. <laughs> oh, I really don't know. You do know. You got a good education, <laughs> but you don't have children. That's the, right. that's the main thing. I, I mean, it's hard for you to see the world when you don't I have children. And I can't speak for the black male either. Um, speak for the why the sisters make it then, like you. So many come out of school and do quite well. They're going to make 10, 20, 30 grand more than their boyfriends and husbands. Mm -hmm. Why is that the case? The first thought that comes to mind is the family structure. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of black fathers in, mm -hmm. the, fa in the family. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that kind of points to a, a breakdown of the family, family structure, and a breakdown of morals and values that affects not only family, but also the community as well. So it kind of leads me back to your original question is what's going on with black America. I think it's just a mental state. Um, I think that there's a lot of hopelessness in the community. And there's a, a really big feeling that I can't do anything. Um, I have no power. I don't have the ability to change my surroundings. And I see a lot of that, not only here in Chicago, but I saw a lot of that back in Berkeley and Oakland. Wow. So, but those of us who have quote unquote, you know, we, 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 we pay the rent, maybe barely pay the rent. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are, you know, uh, above struggling, mm -hmm. is it our responsibility to come help those of, oh, those of us who are struggling? <laughs> I, I you, would you're say, doing I, it. You're doing I it. would say, and this, and this is where I, I think it's not just a black America mm -hmm. thing. I think mm -hmm. this is a U.S. problem in general. Mm -hmm. I think people are very complacent. As long as they're okay, they're not worried about the next person. And so I think that's where you have a lot of people who just don't care about what's going on, you know, on their own block or, you know, across, across town. There's, as long as I'm okay, there's no need for me to step outside, you know, and help the next person. So I think that's not just a black issue. That's an issue at large for Americans. That comes from individualism and things like that. But I... I don't know. I don't even know where to begin. Last set of questions, oh, though. Oh. And I'll let you go. Get, get you off the hot seat. <laughs> I know, right? Barack, Barack Obama's oh. president. Hopefully, he's another president for the next six years and not two. Mm -hmm. And there's a, many of us here in the African American community, not so much me, who think that the president, Barack Obama, should do something for black America. He didn't help everybody else, but he hasn't really helped us yet. Mm -hmm. Should he have a programs that are targeted for lower income African Americans? Your president. <laughs> My president, too. Uh -huh. should, he, should he really target our issues? Some, I, some people will say yes, because if you uplift the black community, then all of the, the U.S. gets uplifted. But I'm, I, m me, I come more so from a spiritual and mental standpoint of the community. If we're not right spiritually and if we're not mentally, there's no program that's going to be able to help us. So you see, most of us ain't right yet. Right. So we, do we have to uh, turn away from our wicked ways so we can hear, heal our land? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is. When you, you know what I'm saying? When you say, <laughs> let me speak, let me, you said you, you, what you said was so profound. Uh -huh. I think if Barack Obama said, here's a job, could we qualify? Mm -hmm. If he gave us a job tomorrow, would we go every day on time and do the work? Are we ready to receive the good that Mr. <clears throat> Obama, if he gives us, are we ready to receive it? Mm -hmm. I'm asking you. I... <laughs> I feel like it's so incriminating, but no, I don't think we're ready. <laughs> no, that's what I wanted you to say. Because <laughs> we're not. <laughs> See, people want to hand out, but I'll be mean, ready to right. take I, it. You know, I don't think we're ready, and not all, not all of it is our fault. Yeah. But I don't, I don't. I think we have a little bit longer, a longer way. So, whose responsibility is it to uh, to to really? Um, and still the values that we once got in the church. You know, it was a time mm -hmm. we got our values from the church, but a lot of us don't go to church. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are not spiritual in any realm. Mm -hmm. So where's the values and the spirituality going to come from? Who are the people going to come from, from upon high or someplace else to say, I'm coming to Inglewood mm -hmm. and we're going to, you know, spiritually transform this section of town. Mm -hmm. Where's that people? Where are they coming from? Or are they coming? I think you have to look at it from a holistic standpoint, and I don't think it necessarily requires that um, people outside the community come in. I think we have to look at what's inside the community already, all the assets that we have, the people who are doing good but don't get the attention or aren't recognized. There's a lot of good in the community, despite what you may hear. Well, I'm, I'm, you have the education. I'm counting on you. It's all <laughs> on you. It's all on me. That's right. <laughs> all right. Well, I take it with pride, then. I take that as a duty and responsibility.